Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem binary tree post order traversal. We're given the root of a binary tree and we want to return the post order traversal of all of its values. So given this tree, post order traversal means we start at the root and we go through the entire left subtree, which in this case is empty. And then we go through the entire right subtree recursively. So then going to the root over here, now we're at two, we recursively go through the left subtree running post order. Now we're at three. It doesn't have a left subtree, so we can't do anything there. It doesn't have a right subtree, so can't do anything there. And then lastly, we process the root node of the subtree, which is three. So we would add three to the output array. Then we'd go back up to our parent two. Then we'd try to go right. There's nothing there, it's empty. So then we'd pop back up to the parent two. And now finally, we'd add two to the output. And then from here, we pop back up to our parent one and then add one to the output. That's how we do it recursively. It's pretty easy to do it recursively. But to solve this problem iteratively is more challenging, and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing here. So the idea is that we want to emulate the recursive solution. We want to be able to go from a child back up to the parent, even though there's not a direct pointer that connects them. How do we do that? Well, the easiest way to do it is to emulate the recursive solution, like I said, which is to use a stack. The recursive solution uses a call stack, but in our case, we're going to have an explicit stack that we're going to declare and manipulate ourselves. But solving this problem iteratively is still not straightforward, I admit. The pre-order solution iteratively or the in-order solution are definitely a lot easier. This is the hardest one to do iteratively. A lot of people have different ways they like to solve it. I'll show you the way I like to solve it. I think the code is pretty simple, though I admit it's not super easy to come up with, but I'll try to explain the intuition so that maybe even halfway through this problem you have like an aha moment where you think that you can solve it yourself. And if you don't have that moment, it's okay because this is a pretty challenging problem. So the idea is we're going to have a stack. I've drawn that over here and we're going to start at the root five. Now with post order, this node is going to be processed last. We know this is going to go in the last position of the stack. We want to recursively go through the left subtree, then the right subtree. So what we need to do is first go down left. So our current pointer is maybe gonna be shifted down here. We're gonna be at one. We know though, after we process this entire subtree, after that, we want to pop back up here to five so that we can go down to its right child four. And then after we do all of that, only then do we want to process the root node. Now, instead of going up to our parent and then down right, why not just kind of skip the step and then after we're done with this, just immediately go here. And then when we're done with this, immediately go back up to the root. That's the idea that we're gonna pretty much follow, but how exactly do we do it? Because if we go down to the left child before adding any of these nodes to our stack, we'll never be able to come back here. So what do we do? Well, the idea is that we're gonna add five to the stack first. And then after that, we're also gonna add four to the stack. We're gonna do both of these before we visit the left child. The reason we're doing it in this order is because we know we're going to be popping from the end of the stack. So when we pop four, we know we want to do this first before we process five. Now there's a couple more things that we need to notice, but instead of just telling you them, I'm going to kind of try to explain it intuitively. So let's continue with this problem. Now let's say we're at one over here. We're going to continue what we kind of just did. We're at one, but we're going to try to go to the left child because we know before we add this to the result, we got to go to the left and we got to go to the right. But before we go to the left, we have to add this to the stack. We have to add one to the stack and we have to add its right child to the stack, which is null. So I'm gonna have an N, which basically stands for null. And I'm also gonna go ahead and write out our result here. So now our current pointer is gonna be over here at null. So we can't really do anything at this point. Whenever we reach null, what we want to do is pop from the end of the stack. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pop this null from the stack. So now we're basically gonna be over here, but we can't do anything once again. So we're gonna pop again from the stack. We're gonna pop this one from the stack. And at this point, we know 
it's okay to add this uh, one value to the result. But how do we know that? Because what I'm about to show you is, okay, we just processed the one, we added it to the result. Now we're gonna basically do the same thing. We're gonna pop from the stack again. Now we're gonna pop the four. So we pop the four, we're over here now. Now, every time you pop a node, are we supposed to take the value and add it to the result? Because now we would have one four, but that's not right. We don't wanna add the four to the result yet. We haven't even gone through its left and right subtrees. So what we're sort of noticing is we only want to add the value of a node to the result the second time that we visit it because we know we have to go through its left and right subtrees even if they happen to be empty just like over here we had to go through the subtrees and then we added one so we want to add the value the second time we visit a node so how do we know that how do we keep track of that well, basically we can do that as we're adding the nodes to the stack. So when we added five to the stack, we know we already visited this five. We just couldn't take the value and add it to the result yet. So basically this five was already visited once. I'm just gonna use like a green little line to indicate that. I could have like an extra array to do that, or I could just, instead of adding a single node, I could add a pair of values where one is the node and the second is like a Boolean which indicates whether this node has been visited or not. The way I'm going to code this up is by using two arrays, one stack for the nodes and another stack that is going to be visited. Each node is going to correspond to some Boolean in the visit array. I'm going to do that because I think that's the most extensible way to code this up. You can kind of convert it to any language that you want. But that's basically it. For every single node, we're gonna have a second value that tells us whether it's been visited or not. It's pretty simple once you know it, but it's not super easy to come up with, I admit. What about the four though? When we were at five, we also added the four to the stack, but that had not been visited yet. So we do not add like a green indicator. When we added the one to the stack though, it was visited. So I'll go ahead and put a little green there. That's pretty much the idea behind this problem though. So now we're going to be at four because we popped four from the stack though, before we end up going to the left child, we're going to add three to the stack and we're gonna add four to the stack. We're kind of running out of space. So let me rewrite this. So this is kind of our stack space now, and I went ahead and moved the result down here. So now before we go down to the two, we're gonna add the three to the stack. It's not been visited yet, but we're also gonna go ahead and add the four to the stack, which has been visited. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little green there. But now we're at two. We're basically gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna add two to the stack. I kinda don't wanna write it all out because we're gonna run out of space again. And we're also gonna add like a null over here to the stack. And for the two, we are gonna add that green to indicate it has been visited. And then we're gonna go left. It's gonna be a null. So we're gonna end up popping from the stack, popping the null. It's null, so we can't do anything. So we're gonna pop again. We're gonna pop the two, but it's been visited. We know that because we have that Boolean to indicate that. So therefore, we're gonna go ahead and add the two to the result. I'm gonna kind of delete this to give us a bit more space, but I hope you get the idea of what we just did here. So now we want to pop again from the stack. And I just noticed I made a mistake. When we added these two, we added them in the reverse order. We want to add this first and then add this because we want to pop this first. So I'll kind of re-fix this. Sorry about that issue. So now we're gonna pop this from the stack. It's three, that means we're down here. We're gonna try to go left, nothing there. We're gonna try to go right, nothing there. We're gonna end up popping the three and you know, popping the three, that means we're gonna have to have added it again with a green to indicate that it's been visited. And then when we pop it, we're gonna add three to the result. And then we're done with this entire subtree. So we're gonna pop again. We're gonna end up popping this four. It has a green to indicate it's been visited before. So we're gonna add four to the result. And once again, we're gonna pop. We're gonna pop this five. It has green to indicate it's been visited. So we're going to add five to the result. So when we finish this subtree, then we went back up here, finished this. Then we're done with all this. So then we went back up to the root and did it. So that's pretty much the idea. That's why this is harder than like pre-order and in-order traversal, because for those, you don't really need to keep track of which ones have already been visited. You don't need to visit the same node multiple times. 
But overall, the time complexity is still going to be big O of n. The stack space is going to be the height of the tree, which if it's balanced is going to be log n. If it's not balanced, it's going to be big O of n. So now let's code this up. So now we're going to code this up. I'm going to initialize our current pointer and our stack to initially be the root. That's the current pointer. And the stack is going to be empty. And this is actually not going to work, or at least this is not the way I'm going to code this up. But I'm going to show you why. I didn't talk about this in the drawing explanation because I think it makes the most sense when you actually try to code it up. So hopefully you understand by the end of it. We're also going to have a result, which is also going to be an array. And we're going to keep track of visited. We could just use the stack and in the stack add like a pair of values like the node and a Boolean to indicate whether it's been visited or not. But that might be harder to translate into other languages. So what I'm doing is having two arrays which basically serve the same exact purpose. So this second array visit will have Booleans. This stack array will have all the nodes. So now let's try this out while current is non null and or or stack is non null that means there's still some nodes for us to visit now if the current node is non null what do we want to do well we might want to append the value to the result just like this current dot value append it to the result but we're only going to do that if it's already been visited how do we know if it's already been visited? Well, we don't know for the beginning, for the root. We don't know if this bit, it's been visited or not. Well, technically we do. We know it's not been visited, but we don't have like a variable to indicate that because we initialized our visit array empty and we initialized our stack as empty as well. Normally what would happen is like in the else case, for example, if we had a null, what we would want to do is we'd pop from the stack. So we'd say stack dot pop the value this would give us the current node and we would say visit dot pop this would tell us if the node's been visited or not let's say v is what stands for visited so this is normally what we would want to do we would pop from visit to know whether a node's been visited or not so why not just for consistency's sake just do that let's not have a current pointer at all let's do it a little bit differently like this, let's just have a stack and just choose to initialize our stack with all the information from the start. Well, when I say all the information, I mean just initialize it with the root and initialize our visit array with false. This kind of makes it more simple for us. So now when we code it up, we know every iteration of the loop, we want to pop from the stack because that's how we're going to be getting the node and we're going to be knowing exactly whether it's been visited or not. So let's say stack dot pop and let's say visit dot pop. That'll give us everything we need. That'll give us the current node and that'll give us whether it's been visited or not. I'm going to use V for that. So now we want to know is the current node non null. What happens if it is null? That's the simple case. Well, we're not going to do anything. If it's null, then we just want to pop again. So do we need to put a pop statement in here? Because we already have it up above. We pretty much don't. So we don't even need this else case because if this were to execute, we can put nothing here and the next iteration of the loop will end up popping from the stack anyway. So let's not even write this out. For our current though, we know it's not null, but we don't know if it's been visited or not. Well, we do, we have that V variable. So that's what we have to figure out. Is this been visited or not? If it has been visited, that's the simple case because that means we can finally take the value, current.value, and append it to the result. And then in the next iteration of the loop, we're gonna pop again. But if this has not been visited, then we know we want to go left, don't we? We want to say current is equal to current dot left. That's how I explained it in the drawing explanation. But when you actually try to code it up that way, it gets kind of tricky. It's possible, but I think it's more easy to just use our stack as the source of truth. So what I'm going to do is append everything to the stack. When I say that, I mean I'm going to append the current node to the stack. It's not been visited, so we know we're going to have to come back to it. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to say stack dot append the current node and whether it's been visited or not, we know it has been visited now. So we're going to add true for the visit value. The next time we pop this, we know we can add the value to the stack. But I also want to add its two children to the stack. So I'm going to say stack 
dot append current dot left and current dot right. But the order we append them in matters. I'm going to append the right child first, and then I'm going to append the left child last because we know on the next iteration of the loop over here, we want to go left first first and then we want to go right. So if the left node is the last one in the stack, that's the first one that we're going to pop. But let's also not forget to add whether they've been visited or not. We know the left node or the right node has not been visited yet. So we're going to say, actually, this is called visit, not visited, visit append false. It's not been visited yet. So we append false. Same thing with the left child. It's not been visited. So we append false and let's correct the name over here as well. So what this is basically doing is taking all three nodes and adding them to the stack. The root goes first because we know that's the one we want to pop last. The right one goes next because we know that's the one we want to pop second to last. And the left one goes last because we know that's the one we want to pop first. This is pretty much all we need. You can see every iteration of the loop, we're going to be popping from the stack. That's why we're always pushing to the stack. And that's why we're initializing our stacks with the root. After this is done, we're going to go ahead and return our result. And let me run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.